Welcome to the Ringer Fantasy Football Show. My name is Danny Heifetz, and I am joined in person by Danny Kelly and Craig Rollback. And I'm really loud, and you guys are just staring at me. I'm like, you actually have to hear this in person, though. It's very different. I was, like, literally looking at my computer while you were doing the intro because I'm, like, so used to talking to you on Zoom. But yeah, we're so, great. like, online brain. So like, yeah. I can't look at humans in the eyes anymore. <laughs> we're in Los Angeles. We are going to do our quarterback tiers today. So our rankings are at fantasyfootball.themirror.com. But to be totally honest, the best way to draft is you want rankings and tiers because you want basically you want to by position group all the players into basically groups of players of somewhat equal value so right. that you can just kind of figure out live in your draft when it's like tick, tick, tick. And you're like freaking out yeah. you're like, oh, there's like eight quarterbacks left. I still like and two running backs. Take a running back. And so you don't panic. And so if you just kind of put in the work to be like, oh, who am I actually comfortable with and draw a red line and that way you don't just, you know, panic and totally just regret one random August 29th date for the rest of your life. Yeah, bucketing players with similar potential. Right. You just, you, like I, in an ideal world, you want to get like the last guy in the tier every time, right? But that's not realistic. I, I actually don't even know if that's true because when, especially if you're in an auction draft, if you're in an auction draft and you're, there's one guy left in the tier, that guy actually might go for He's more. He's going to go for more. Than a yeah. couple of guys in the middle of the tier. But there's, in a, there's but less in anxiety the snake in draft. the middle of the tier. In the snake draft, I mean like, yeah. in theory, you're getting the most value if you get the last guy in every tier. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we're of. here actually recording from Bill Simmons' <laughs> office, and he would say that if He'd you do be snake draft, you yeah. do your booger brain. That's or whatever. Booger eater. Eat, eat or your whatever. Boogers, yeah. Eat your boogers. <laughs> booger eater. Isn't that how cavemen got smart in a way, you know? By eating their own boogers? Or that maybe it was bone marrow. It was bone marrow. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Anyway. That, they ate their own bone know. marrow, and that's how they got smarter? Not their no, own they're bone eating marrow. Other they things. ate other people's bone marrow? Yeah. And that's how they got smarter? That's the theory. Sapiens. Is that Aaron Rodgers' theory? Have you read Sapiens? I have. It's good. It's a really good. I know. Book. I thought about reading it. I don't know what that is. It's a, Yuval Harara, right? Yuval yeah. Noah Harari. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good book. Yeah. It's really, okay. it's quite long, I believe. It's right? super long. Yeah. Books are so long. Maybe audiobook it. Yeah. A lot of words. Yeah. Yeah. An audiobook Spotify. on Spotify. Woo! Look at that. All Just right. for a small <laughs> uptick in price, you can unlimited audiobooks at Spotify. <laughs> Do one episode Great. in studio at Spotify. It. Yeah. There we go. Premium no, plan. Very clean. Unlimited audiobooks. Yeah. All right. So quarterback. Just to start off here, do you guys want a really good quarterback this year, or do you want to just wait and just get one of the random, the, the infinite six foot four white pocket passing quarterbacks at the end of the draft? Uh, I have completely abandoned like the like take a late QB thing. Like I am so fully good QB pilled or something. Um, so or yeah. some yeah, you are online. I think just saying pilled means you're online. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I I absolutely want one of the big. I think there's a big five, and I want one of them. Who's your big five? Lamar. Josh, Mahomes, Hurts, and Anthony Richardson. Ooh, I like the last one. Um, <laughs> That's the end of the. Team. I think in a, like, I like those top guys, and I'm trying to come away with a. I, I, my strategy on quarterback is I want to come away with a guy that is going to give me a huge advantage at the position, and the way that they do that, generally speaking, is they either throw 50 touchdowns or they run a lot. And the because 50 that, touchdowns have happened like four times. Yeah, it's ever, like Mahomes. So. You know, so <laughs> I think like. There are some guys who are going later that could do that, but you're taking a risk by not grabbing one of the big rushing quarterbacks like Lamar, Josh. Um, who else am I missing here? Of course, Lamar, Lamar Josh. Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, of course. Richardson. Richardson. Kyler. To a degree, yeah. Um, and then I think there's a couple other guys that could rush a lot and could run a lot um, and get a lot of touchdowns, but... We just don't really know, and that we'll talk about those guys. So we're going to go through our quarterbacks here, and we're just going to actually right now, we're going to basically negotiate out what our tier should be. Right. And then we're actually going to update our fit rankings at fantasyfootball.thereo.com so that when you click on each position, these tiers that we argue at right now will come up yeah. in the format. And then we have a draft tracker at fantasyfootball.thereo.com. So if you're doing your draft on whatever platform, ESPN or Yahoo Sleeper, and you want to use our different platform, which not to toot our own horn, but one of the best ways to just take advantage of your draft is – don't use the same rankings everyone else is looking at. Like, that's just the easiest way to get value. So use our stuff. Yeah, do your own research with to, our research. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, You do your own research because we did the research for you. Yeah. Just don't do everybody else's research. Use our research. This is Aaron Rodgers approved? Yeah, it is. Aaron Rodgers approved research. Okay. So starting tier one, tier one quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Josh Allen for the Bills. Jalen Hurts for the Eagles. Lamar Jackson for the Ravens. No question. I think my question is, is this a tier of just those three guys? And then Patrick Mahomes gets like his own tier. Is it a tier of like Josh Allen hurts Lamar because they all run? Is Mahomes in there too? Should Anthony Richardson be in there? Like, is this 
Because part of me is like, oh, those are the top three, and then Mahomes should be like fourth. He's just like you know, right. himself. I think it's a big five. I kind of lean the other way. I feel like Josh Allen hurts Lamar. Is They are in their own tier because they have proven year in and year out that they're going to run a lot. They're going to score a lot of touchdowns. And they are essentially giving you a running back, like a, an RB2 and a QB1 in one roster spot on your team. Yeah, but Richardson was like literally the best quarterback in the league in right. fantasy points per drop back last year. Yeah, but, nobody's he, played it was, four games. but it's it's such a small sample. I think that's what the difference is. Because in a perfect world, if, if he's fully healthy all year long, unquestionably deserves to be in that. Yeah, okay. But well, if, so but but I think prove Anthony it? Richardson, Anthony, Anthony, English, Anthony Richardson has played 17 football games since he was in high school. And it's so, like, it has to matter a little. <laughs> right. There's just so much, there's just so much more variance with him than the other guys. They've proven it year in and year out. I've I seen Lamar win two MVPs. I've seen yeah. the Great Pyramids of Egypt. Like, I've seen, like, <laughs> I've seen Josh Allen. Josh Allen, I think DK, I, I'm on the wavelength with you, DK, because there is like a question. Basically, would you, I think the essence of a tier, and this is why I encourage people to make their own tiers and edit them. The essence of a tier is, I don't actually care how you rank these people in the group as yeah. long as they're in the same group. Yeah. Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson. I don't care if you take Lamar Jackson first. I don't care if you take Jalen Hurts first. I would not take Anthony Richardson over Josh Allen. Josh Allen has been the number one scoring fantasy quarterback in three of the past four seasons. Number one. And the, the year he was not, he was number two. You're not taking Anthony Richardson over him. Like, you can't rank him over. I think that's fine. <laughs> I, I honestly <laughs> genuinely think that's fine. Wait, Craig is taking him. You're gonna yeah. take, you would take him over? I think if somebody did, I'd, I'd be totally okay with that. To me, I'm like, look, he, oh. he lost Stefan Diggs. There's a wrinkle there. And Jalen Hurts doesn't have Jason Kelsey. I, I, I do think there are variables factored into both these guys where I'm like, I don't know if this is going to be the— I mean, there's an entirely new offense getting put in in Philadelphia right now. Okay, but would you do it, though? Yeah, I would absolutely take Anthony Richardson <laughs> over Jalen Hurts. <laughs> would, would you really? Yes, yes, I would. He's going hard on Anthony no, this but, year. Are, yeah. To be clear, when I say take him, are you saying, like, I would take Anthony Richardson Richardson two rounds later, or like they're both there. They're both there. Sitting in front of me, I would take Anthony Richardson over Jalen Hurts. Honestly, I don't hate it. I, 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 it sounds nuts, but like if you just said that two years about Jalen Hurts versus Lamar Jackson, right. you would have won your league in 2022. So yeah. I don't, I want to say you're nuts, but I think it's actually just, it's trusting your eyes because again, the, Anthony Richardson, the 18 fantasy points in six minutes for statistics. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just can't get over that. Yeah. I mean, look, I understand, but I do, th I, I, I also feel like if you're in a league with friends who like are into fantasy and they like are watching and keeping up with everything, Anthony Richardson is by far that like the sexiest, most talked about player in the offseason right now. You're not going to be able to get him in tier two. Like he is going to be included with the rest of these guys. I guarantee it. So tier one, we're saying, so it's Josh Allen hurts Lamar, Patrick Mahomes, Richardson. So what happens to Kyler? Because I do not think at all Kyler, the next group is Kyler Murray, and then it's like C.J. Stroud, Jordan Love, Joe Burrow, Dak Prescott, like pocket passing guys. Kyler Murray ran for 14 touchdowns or some crazy. Am I making that up? No, how many touchdowns did he run for in, in 2020? Four years ago? <laughs> shut <laughs> no, boom, shut the fuck it. up. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's, he, it was a lot. He ran for 11, 11 in 2020. Like he can't okay. be in the same but he's, group he's as said Joe Burrow. Okay, but the last three years, five, three, three. Right, Which I was going to say. Hell? Well, not but all also three he, of those years. He well, has said that he doesn't want to run as much. Yeah, I, yeah. He said he wasn't going to play video games as much, and he has stopped. So <laughs> hold on, because Ben Simmons said he'd play basketball. Who cares? So, so are you guys? So Craig, I guess you would be the person to ask since you really want to put Anthony Richardson in tier one. I, I think you could talk me into Mahomes being outside of tier one more than you could Anthony Richardson. Right, dude, but. Mahomes is the greatest quarterback ever. So and what? I know. It's not like Brady was the top five quarterback so, the last three years of his career, even though he was playing great. Are we saying, so tier one is Josh Allen, Hurts, Lamar, Mahomes, and Richardson? And I think it's big five, yeah. But look, I'm willing to be overruled. DK, what do you think? Do you think of, because th the way I've actually. The second the season starts, Anthony Richardson's going to have 32 points in week one. We're going to be like, fuck. Fuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you're right about that. I'll give you that. I just feel like there's way more risk with him, though. I do like the week one test of, like, think about <laughs> if this guy explodes, would you redo this in week one? I'm like, yeah, honestly, yeah. I need to see it one time through this I season I immediately to regret this. Yeah. I, think yeah. it, I think it needs to either be Allen, Hurts, Lamar, Mahomes, and Richardson in tier one, and then Kyler in his own tier in tier two. Or I think we need to split those guys up. And I think uh, upper, I, middle, personally, middle, I upper. personally would do tier one, Allen, Hurts, Lamar, tier two, Mahomes, Richardson, Murray. Mahomes? That kind of makes sense. You think that's Kyler's like crazy with upside. Mahomes and Anthony Richardson? Yeah, I do. 
No way. You know what? I thought about it for four months, and I thought yesterday asked me right there, and I was like, yeah, no, I don't believe that. You, I, Kyler, Kyler's you're, the you're, best of the next You're group. telling me I, if I you're in a draft, Kyler. and Kyler Murray and Anthony Richardson are sitting right there, and Patrick Mahomes, you'd be like, I could see myself taking Kyler. No, he's right. He's right. I would no not take way. Kyler over Mahomes. Okay. He's right. No, he's right. He's right. <laughs> Fuck Jesus. it. He, no, Craig's right. Leave me alone, Craig. Kyler's All the right. best We're of the We're person now, so I feel like I can physically assault Yeah, he's just like, uh, this guy. No, I, I think actually Craig actually stared me down right there. And I was like, you know what? He's right. I'm not. <laughs> called your bluff. I am not taking Kyler Murray over Richardson. Like, there's no chance. And like, my so own is Kyler, rule. So I guess is Kyler in his own tier then? Well, well, I think let's lock in the top five. I actually feel really good about that. Where it's like, it's the four best rushing quarterbacks in the NFL and Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And like, that just makes sense. Like, those are the five quarterbacks you should go. All right, so let's lock that in. That's literally what it is. It's the four best rushers. The only thing you Mahomes. could convince me of is if you want to mini tier it with just Mahomes and Richardson and like with tier one B. No, because then we're making it so complicated. Like imagine, we, we, like everyone listening right now, we're like, all right, so it's like a tier one A and then a tier one B. It's like fuck that. Like just tier one is the four best rushing quarterbacks in the NFL and Patrick Mahomes. Like that just makes common sense. It's exactly how we would do it. Like if in our drafts and the leagues we care about. Like that's just that is it. I also the other thing I would say about this group and the reason. I agree, with, like, in terms of what we're actually going to do this year. I want one of these guys, yeah. or I'm going to be the, like, or Kyler. But if I'm not getting one of them, I'm the last person to take a quarterback because I actually love the way, if you do mock drafts or you can do best ball or whatever just to, like, game it out. Best ball's a little weird because receivers go, like, rounds and rounds and rounds earlier than uh, your real draft will. But I love how your teams come out if you start with, like, a running back or a receiver in the first two rounds. And if you can get, like, Lamar Jackson – and you can still get his tight end, like Mark Andrews yeah. for the Ravens, or you can get Travis Kelsey and Mahomes, or you can get um, Josh Allen and, Kincaid. and yeah. Dalton Kincaid, or even Kyler Murray and Trey McBride. I love how the teams come out where you have this quarterback tight end stack, you have a great running back, you have a receiver, and you can hit like a few more receivers, come back around and try to get your number two running back being, you know, there's so many guys. Like, I don't even love all, the, the Austin Eckler or Kamara just look good as your number two running back. I, Austin Eckler's probably toast. But like, <laughs> you can get, like a Najee Harris, Jalen Warren. Yeah, like yeah. there's all, there are so many running backs. Joe Mixon for the Texans. Like there's so many running backs you can come around or even like Gus Edwards if you want to just like backfill, you yeah, know. Josh Jacobs. There's so many guys. So anyway, I, I, um, I like, that's my strategy is I would love to do like a quarterback, maybe a tight end stack if you want to be cheeky. But if you don't, I'm waiting for, I don't like the next tier. I want to be clear about that. Of quarterback, yeah. So the next tier would well, be— Well, hold on. Where, where, where did we land? So we landed with Josh Allen. Big five. Jalen Hurts, Lamar okay. Jackson, Mahomes, and Anthony Richardson's the big five. That's the tier one. Okay. I can't tell with Hurts. Right, can we briefly talk about What do you mean Hertz? you can't tell? So, like, I, I go back and forth. I have had Hurts at one and five in my rankings and, like, everywhere Dude. in between. I can't figure out if I'm, like, a guy had 15 rushing touchdowns last year. I think he's an awesome player. But I'm also like, all right, everything's different now. Their center's gone, who was like the centerpiece like of the offense. I would not Everything overrate. is different. I would not I overrate the They have push. a brand new offensive scheme. They have a new running back. They have a new center. I, and the vibes are kind of weird. I don't know. I feel like a lot actually <laughs> is different. The vibes are weird, but I wouldn't overrate the tush push because I, they're going to do it. First of all, other teams did the tush push. It works. It, it's honestly— It was the difference between 80% success up. and 90% success. Yeah, it's, right. like, it's, it's still—the Eagles are still going to be doing the tush push, and they're still it's going not, to use yeah, it. Yeah, it's not like a binary thing. It's like, yes, they're going to do it, or no, they're not going to do it. Maybe they do they're it not going to be doing the, it as the much. The reason why Hurts was who he was—I have this stat somewhere, but it was like Lamar Jackson had like nine rushes inside the five last year, or over the last two years— Jalen Hurts is 36. Yeah. So but I'm just like, I'm just making, I just want to make sure that that's still going to happen. I think that's fair, but I still go back to 2022. Jalen Hurts had more games over 30 than under 20. And there's, and again, Jalen Hurts also fell off last year because he had this ankle injury. Yeah. He was banged up the whole year. And it collapsed. He was still the number two quarterback on the season. I also think there is a Russell Wilson-esque thing here where his off, the, the offense that Jalen Hurts plays in is the Jalen Hurts offense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's not a quarterback that they're just going to be like, oh, we're going to abandon running him now because he, we got Saquon Barkley or because we can't do the tush push. I don't think that's going to be the case. He's going to still do his thing. He's going to scramble a lot. You know, maybe he doesn't score quite as many touchdowns, but he's still going to be scoring a ton of, of, of rushing yard or of rushing fantasy points, especially relative to, like, almost every other quarterback. A down so, season for Hurts is a rushing touchdown every other game. Like, yeah. That would be bad. Yeah, like eight, nine rushing touchdowns. So, so I'm still really And also, you, like, maybe the tush push is more of a product of the fact that he can squat, like, 620 so, pounds. Can we talk right. about the other—I will say the vibes, though, I think is the realest thing for the Eagles because— Yeah, it's just like, I don't know. When, I, when I'm when i taking a quarterback this high in an auction, if I'm spending 50 bucks on a quarterback, like, I want to make sure <laughs> I'm heading into this season— and my boys on the squad are happy. <laughs> you know, I want the vibes to be high. I don't want to yeah. turn on an Eagles game every week and be like, "Fuck." So the vibes are kind of good, though. So, I think. Well, no, Nick Sirianni. So Nick, no, the Eagles. Sirianni in training camp. 
No, the vibes well, are awful. Who cares about Sirianni? He's a figurehead. He's the head coach. coach. Yeah. He's the fucking head coach. Yeah, but you, I mean, he's a figurehead. Yeah, that's bad vibes. Like that's like. But I think he can every, get fired. everything we've heard out of of Eagles training camp has been positive in terms of like what the offense looks like. I don't sure about that, but I think we're so just for prologue. Craig nailed the Eagles season last year, which was a Super Bowl hangover where they actually woke up drunk, started ten and one, and then the hangover set up and it was like it set in and it was the worst ever. <laughs> oh, God, Collapsed like one and six, <laughs> destroyed. And so Sunday at five PM. That's like, us after the live <laughs> show. And so the Eagles, they're going into the season. They have a new offensive coordinator. They have Kellen Moore. They have a new defensive coordinator in Vic Fangio. And so they have Nick Sirianni as the head coach. Oh, but so it's not Howie, his offense anymore. Howie Roseman hired Kellen Moore. Yeah, well, what's the thing is the Eagles are like a baseball team. Like the Yankees now, the Yankees have a, a manager, but Aaron Boone doesn't like he like the G, the front offices for baseball teams now kind of do way more of the stuff that managers used to do. The Eagles are like that as a football team where they're doing a lot more. Like you always hear about coaches that have personnel control, like Kyle Shanahan or Bill Belichick. The Eagles are the other way. The G, the front office has way more power than uh, yeah, like most Brian teams Dayball do. chose Shane Bowen. He like walked into Joe Shane and was exactly. like, "This is my DC. We're hiring him." Exactly. Sirianni was not like I want Kellen Moore. Sirianni was informed we will be hiring a new <laughs> offensive coordinator, and so Nick Sirianni That's what there, I'm assistant to the general manager, assistant yeah. to the general manager, and so Nick Sirianni though, like, he, so now he's just this guy who now he's like needs chief to get vibes off. This is what I'm talking about. He's, he's bad vibes. When but I don't think Dom, he matters. I, I, I do feel like he doesn't matter, dude. But when Big he's Dom not doing shit, what, why does he matter? He, I don't he know. matters because if they start three and three, he's going to get fired. You matter because I feel like him and Jalen Hurts are having really weird comments back and forth in the media. Who has like, more power? Hurts by a mile. It shouldn't have to be a question that is Jalen Hurts going to get Nick Sirianni fired in like October. Like, they, like I don't know how you're ignoring this. You don't want your one of the highest picks you take in your draft to have their coach get fired four weeks into the if season. If the Eagles start zero and two, everyone in Philly media is going to be like Nick Sirianni should be fired, and it's all Jalen Hurts left to talk about. And I like, think Big Dom should the, be the coach. Honestly, Big Dom should be the coach. His his title did you say change his title? Vibe, vibe Assistant to the his title is like head of coaching operations. What <laughs> head of coaching? Like he operates Nick Sirianni like yeah, a meat know. puppet. I'm going to look up his job title. He, anyway, got, he got promoted. To your point. I just think, think Sirianni problem, doesn't matter. Sirianni is the most emotional <laughs> That's roller. That's so weird. What do you mean? Like, I just think he do, he's like irrelevant to me. <laughs> <laughs> like the head coach. He's there. He's just a he's guy just a that's guy. in, he's the, just in the building. Honestly, you're probably right. All right. You guys want to move on? All right. Okay. Next tier here. So is Kyler alone? Is so what's well, the question. So that's, the next, yeah, the next guys know. in our rankings are Kyler Murray, CJ Stroud, Jordan Love, Joe Burrow, Dak Prescott. We can lump Kyler in with them, but like, I think it's this this simple. Would you take C.J. Stroud or Jordan Love over? Would you take C.J. Stroud over Kyler Murray? Would you no. take Jordan Love over him? No. The upside of the rushing? Like, Stroud doesn't have the rushing upside. No, I would take Kyler. I think the hate's gone a little too far on Stroud. I think Heifetz has been kind of anti-Stroud for so long that it's seeped into I my brain. I love C.J. Stroud. I just think the problem is everybody loves C.J. Stroud. And hence, I would like to sell my C.J. Stroud stock while everyone's agreeing. That's totally fair. I agree that I'd probably take Kyler over Stroud, but do I think it's like... A question? Yeah. Do I think? I think that's fair. So yeah, if someone. All right, fine. So the next tier should probably be Kyler, Stroud, Jordan Love. Yeah. You could Dak. Stop. I would like to move Joe Burrow down. I don't think Burrow should be in there. I don't think Burrow I'm should sure be DK's in this tier. Fight that. I. I'm just saying, you guys are bumming me out. I like guys who throw <laughs> footballs three days in a row. That's like, can we call this tier? That I still, guys who I throw still footballs love three days in a row. I can throw a football three days in a row. Joe Burrow cannot. <laughs> Burrow and three. He's not allowed to. We need to name this Burrow and three or no? It's not that funny. Whatever. I don't Burrow know. and three. Bur that didn't really make any sense. No, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. No bad um, ideas in a brainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> so wait. So the next tier is Kyler Stroud, Burrow Jordan Love. I think move. Bar Do we want? I think Dak should Brock Purdy be in this tier. With, with Kyler and Love? Yeah, I have to ask. I have to ask. I'm contractually I mean, obligated to ask. Yeah. Also, Big Dom's coaching title is, he is in charge of game day coaching operations, as opposed to he was the senior advisor to the GM and chief security officer. Now he's in charge of game day coaching operations. Do you remember like I met the get back guy. Dude, I met Big Dom at the Combine. <laughs> Did you? How was he? He's was oh, he yeah. big? Man. He's huge. <laughs> he's <laughs> Didn't you get a selfie with him? Uh, I, it's the, so I would never like the professionalism with like being around these guys. I would never have asked. I've never in my life asked a player for a picture or a coach, but I was like, big Dom, like he's big Dom. <laughs> like, I don't know. He's big he's Dom. He's like, he's a, he's a cartoon yeah. character. And I walked right by Sirianni. I had no idea. I didn't realize he just, he's just a guy. I'm telling you. He's I didn't irrelevant. even notice him, I I didn't even you, notice him in the hotel lobby. You're strengthening my case. I it, <laughs> honestly didn't notice. Sirianni was there. I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> he doesn't matter. 
<laughs> is Michael Scott if he got angry more? He doesn't matter. Purdy, Purdy was a QB7 last year. 18 and That's why I have to ask. If someone wants Purdy over Jordan Love, what I'm going to do, fight them? Like, Pur- Purdy over Dak Prescott? Like, I get it. Purdy outscored yeah. CJ Stroud last year. Dude, that's. I think that, that I think this answers our question. But, I like, think, so did Kirk Cousins. But, all right, well, he tore his Achilles. Tier one is the top, big, the best four rushers in the NFL and Mahomes. Tier two is the the really good young pocket passers. It's Ky- the Kyler Murray. Well, Dak Why? Murray, I don't understand Ky- why Kyler's not in the top group. Because to Craig's point, the rushing happened four years ago, and I have to acknowledge that. And again, the core thing with the tiers is, w- can you actually rank these guys in any order? And like with a straight face. I don't think you can put Kyler in that first tier. C- Craig made a point for Anthony Richardson with a straight face over Hertz. I get it. Tier two is Kyler Stroud, Jordan Love, Dak, Brock. You can order those guys in any order with a straight face. Even if you disagree, I don't think you can like get up in arms about it. I think that's fair. IMO. Dak is okay. so weird because... I, I'm like I don't even think about him, and yet <laughs> D- Dak was like He's one of the highest paid player ever. But like for real, he like probably should have been the MVP last year. He was a top four quarterback in fantasy. The MVP probably should have been Patrick Mahomes. Eh, no, I mean statistically, it was like his worst season. I know, but he, uh, do we should we do this? I mean, it's a regular season award, and Dak was incredible. It probably should have been fucking Dak. He had that one bad game, and it just, like, killed his... Remember that weird stretch where it was, like, every week there was a new MVP candidate, and then they got killed on Sunday, and then it changed (laughs) to a new guy? I just, like, you know, Shaq said said this about the NBA award this year because they had this whole argument on um, inside the NBA. And Shaq was like, I think... Like, people talk about stats. He's like, MVP should go to the baddest motherfucker. And I was like, it's it's Mahomes. Like, it's this year. It's like, who's the guy you don't want? Who's like, the, defense the, best defense? the most scared of? Yeah, like, Lamar, like, I love, Lamar had an amazing season. I'm not taking anything away from him. Well, I'm taking MVP away. But, like, <laughs> I'm not best... taking anything away except the, the, the highest the... honor that the NFL <laughs> The Ravens do. had the best defense in, like, years. <laughs> and he played incredible. And, like, Mahomes, he... Rashad Bateman, you know, didn't play a ton, but like, first <laughs> round pick. Zay Flowers was a first round pick. Mm-hmm. Mark Andrews was a high pick. He had all these offensive line, like, Mahomes had the worst receiving core in the entire league, and yeah. they led the league in draw. I don't know. We have to relitigate this, but I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, the Cowboys went 12 and four. Dak had 36 touchdowns and nine picks, and threw for 4,500 yards. It's like whatever. Okay. Do you? But do you even want him in fantasy? Well, this is why it's so I weird. I feel like no, nothing has really changed. I mean, assuming like C.D. Lamb plays this year, like yeah. theoretically, this is going to be the exact same situation. And he was a top four guy, and we're kind of just like, yeah, but not really. Okay, I just think, I think he's I, just. I, I don't want Dak because I don't want any of these pocket passers. I want to take the wait and take the last one. I want Jordan Love if I have to because I think he's going to go the latest of this group. And I also think Jordan Love has the highest up. I mean, Kyler's the guy that if Kyler fell, I would like Kyler. But if I, I think don't Ky- Kyler, I think Kyler. I'm going to say it again is in his own tier. I don't think he's in the same tier as these pocket passers. He's I still think aver- he's the top last of the year tier. coming off an ACL. He averaged over five points a game rushing. I agree with you. But in total, that was he averaged 18 points a game, which is like... But he, I, I agree. Yeah, but he was coming he, off an ACL. He I know. came back in October from an ACL. I agree with DK. Kyler, I think that the reason I like Kyler and that I was pushing for him to maybe be in the, the big six is because I think everyone's just forgotten that Kyler Murray is a really good runner because he came back midseason from this ACL injury and they're the Cardinals. And like, let's be real. How often do you think about the Arizona Cardinals? Like how, you know? Yeah. Plus, and, like he could pass... He could have much better passing numbers too this year. You got Marvin Harrison, another year with Trey McBride. The offense gets going. But we can't just give out our own tier to every, willy-nilly. Like, you know who deserves their own tier? Kyle Pitts every year. Tight end gets his I own think, tier. I think, I think no we can do like whatever him. the fuck we want. Damn. Why can't There's we no do the rules. It? Because it's good. I, I don't know. It's like, I want to do it. So I'm just Ky- saying it. Kyler tore his ACL. 2022. 2022. Right. So before that, though, like 2022, before he got injured, he once again averaged 18 fantasy points a game. I'm just like, that's kind of basically what Craig's point is. I just think it's fair to put him at the top of this tier. He's my number one quarterback in this tier. Anthony I, Richardson averaged 18 fantasy points per game last year. Yeah, but that the but he didn't play. But he weird. Left, but he play, yeah, he left half the games with injury. He wasn't playing at him. Yeah. He was. He averaged like he was really nine points a quarter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Per Fine. drop back again, number one. Yeah. Per, I'm just like if somebody looked me in the eyes and was like, I'm taking Jordan Love over Kyler Murray. I'm not going to be like. Stupid decision. I think I think that a, a tier for its a no, one player has to be like unanimous. Like it has to be like three keys in the submarine. <laughs> I feel like I've disagreed with all your guys' tiers so far, but that's fine. We you can probably overrule be me. Right about DK's probably right about everything. Yeah. All right, so I think we just lock it in then. Kyler Stroud, Love, Dak, Purdy, and we're going to drop Burrow. Burrow. DK, yeah. how do you feel about that as somebody yeah. who's kind of in opposition of all of our decisions? Yeah, <laughs> someone who hates us. I'm you, still very hopeful. 
and optimistic for Burrow, but I don't think you can completely ignore the risk stuff. So it's I, really I'm fine weird. With it. He's yeah. not. I, I I really hate that I'm like I've become like the ho- the horseman of the apocalypse. That one of the most fun players in the entire league is like I don't, I'm not trying to be like the anti- like the NFL is so much more fun when Joe Burrow is right. elite. And right. Also, the only person who's actually put up a fight against Patrick Mahomes, like the only one. Having said that, he can't throw football three days in a row. Like, what is, like, I don't know. If he, honestly, it's the difference. If he had the little questionable tag for the draft, like, it makes you think, like, once you take Joe Burrow and he's got that little cue and you're like, is that going to be there all year? I mean, it, it, yeah. And like, honestly, it's just, if you're talking about risk, he has more risk. Yeah. Period. Like, objectively, it's more risky. Less risk. Even though he's more risky. He could be awesome. He could have a a career year. I, I, and I wouldn't be that surprised, but, you know, the injury is legitimate. Concern. Yeah. So I think we move him down. I think we move Purdy up just because Purdy, I it's I don't think it's hard to argue that Purdy should be there with Dak and them. Here's my question. I know you. we're begrudgingly just being like pretty yeah, fine. Purdy. Right, well, he's, he's really he, good. He's there. He's doing great. <laughs> I here's my question for the next tier. I would argue I think the next guy we have here is Jaden Daniels. And I actually We're starting would tier argue, three. T- no, yeah, this is tier three. So tier one is the top five guys, tier two. We have Kyler Murray's the top one in tier three, yeah. Then? Okay. Yes. No, Kyle sorry, Murray's a top two. one tier two. Yeah. Top two. God. I'm glad we made this so simple yeah, for yeah. ourselves. Yeah. No, this, I, we're here. Five guys in tier one, five guys in tier two. This is as oh, yeah. simple that, as it can be, that actually. Is, that is pretty easy. Yeah. Wow. Good for us. Tier four. So I kind of think Jaden Daniels should be his own tier. And maybe if you want to put Now you want your own tier. Because uh, there's no one even remotely. I don't know. Here's why. Here's why. If the tier is just because we just had 10 quarterbacks. Yeah. So now we're approaching, it's really just like. A bunch of backups that you're going to mix and match. I actually love right. having. I love that we do our. I think. I think it's like Jaden Daniels t- is just tier three, just tier four. Joe Burrow, and then yeah, and then we go to tier just five. rankings. Yeah. No, here's why. Here's why. Here's why. <laughs> I'm going to read the next. <laughs> that would actually be a good. <laughs> be a good tiers are thirty <laughs> tiers. <bro>. Thirty <laughs> tiers. <laughs> so here's why we could we could agree on anything. Thirty <laughs> tiers. Yeah, no, tier twenty eight is Gardner Minshew, Bo Nix, and Daniel Jones. Can I read uh, the next list of quarterbacks? Here's why I think. Jaden Daniels, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence, Caleb Williams, Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins, Tua. And I'm like, does Jaden Daniels' fantasy profile have anything in common with those people? Like, no. It's like Jaden Daniels could throw for 190 yards a game, but run for like... He has such an incredible floor. And that's the thing. The rushing, the combo, it's like he could be great. as He could be great as in real life and for fantasy BRG3. He He could be as bad of a passer as Justin Fields and still be the QB3. And I'm like, that's not true for any of these other guys. Like, he could just be Justin Fields. Yeah. yeah. So how are we going to lump him with Justin Herbert or Joe Burrow? Like, I I really do think he's unlike anyone else and it should be designated as such because he's just a different, he's just, and he's going to start immediately. So I think he's a different kind of guy. I could get behind that. DK, how, He's do you, the Ricky Bobby how do you feel about Jaden Daniels being ahead of Joe Burrow? I mean, in fantasy, I'm fine with it. Okay. What's yeah. Joe? Seriously, what is actually Joe Burrow's upside? That the wrist injury is fine, he gets over it, and then he throws. He like leads the league in passing touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the you know the possibilities with Burrow are yes, he could have 45 passing touchdowns. Wouldn't shock me whatsoever. But, Even those offensive coordinator left to become the head coach of the Titans, and you know. But like in terms of. When we're just talking fantasy, like straight up, the rushers are way more valuable. And, and get, he, he's going to, Jane Daniels, especially because he had in college, if he wait the way that he played, he was scrambling a ton. Even if they don't utilize him as a designed rush guy, which I think they will, by the way, but even if they don't do it as much as we are thinking, he's going to run around a lot. There's big question marks about their offensive line. He's really explosive. They're probably going to be playing from behind a lot. You know, he could be the type of guy. Remember a couple of years ago when uh, Jalen Hurts would, do nothing for the first three quarters and then score like 20 points in the fourth yeah, quarter. Crazy. Like I could see Jane Daniels being that guy this year. From a pure fantasy point of view, I don't have any problem re- ranking J- Jaden Daniels really aggressively and because I think that's the type of player you're looking for in fantasy. Your upside with Burrow is 2022. Burrow threw for 35 touchdowns, 12 picks, 4,500 yeah. yards. He was the QB four. He averaged 22 points a game. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think the thing is with Burrow, there's also a case for Trevor Lawrence. There's a case for Goff. There's a case for Kirk Cousins, Herbert, Tua. All those guys have like, oh, well, they could have a great year. And I look at Jaden Daniels, and it's just the supply demand to me. Just like the supply of quarterbacks you can do what DK said is Jaden Daniels and Justin Fields if he yeah. starts for Pittsburgh. 
And if you want to argue Caleb Williams having less rushing but like better passing, sure. But like, right. I mean, so that that's where I'm just a Jaden. So I think tier three is just Jaden Daniels. Hell yeah, we do I, every every single position group. We should have one guy who's his own tier. And it <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> we should put on it. You literally, I literally was just arguing for this about like five minutes ago, and you guys. Yeah, but shut yours me was down. bad, and this was good. No, I disagree. I, we should do it for every single category or every position. That's so fun. <laughs> Pitts, Daniels, yeah. who's the who's running the, back? Who's I feel the, like the I'm running getting back? Freaking gaslighted right now. Gaslit. Gaslighted. Yeah. Gaslighted. You just gaslit yourself <laughs> yeah. into thinking gaslighted was a real word. I was at a I was I hosted a party and I turned my gas stove on with my ass. And I ass, blamed yeah. And my you friend, gaslighted yourself. I, well, yeah. Well, my friend Claire was like, Danny, you just did that. And I was like, No, you did that. <laughs> gaslighting. She's like, I did? I was like, gaslight. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway. Is Devon A. Chan in his own tier? Yes. He's it. He's it for the running backs. He's his own tier. Yeah. There's Done. never been All anyone right. like him ever. We're, We're not cooking. talking about running backs right now. Whatever. We need to, now we just need <laughs> yeah, to get a wide receiver. His own tier. There's never been anyone like A. Chan. Receiver? I mean, mm. is it? Uh, who is the receiver? It's hard. It's hard. Cup. Dude, yeah. Cooper Cup. Jack just threw Cooper Cup. Cooper, I actually think Cooper Cup's not bad because he's not. Yeah. He's kind of like. Could, he be, could be the wide receiver one overall. Yeah, it could be the number one receiver also, like, might not play. Like, he like literally is a year away. Also, he's a year off of a triple crown. Unfortunately, yes. I do think Two we should years. probably lump Diggs in with well, him just because Diggs is also... <laughs> Semantics. Like, yeah. <laughs> Technically, that season ended in 2023. <laughs> Actually, it did in 2022. All right. Tier four. So, just to recap. So, our top ten quarterbacks. We have tier one is Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Mahomes, and Richardson. Tier, mm-hmm. So, tier one is just the best four rushers in Mahomes. Tier two is Kyler Murray, CJ Stroud, Jordan Love, Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy. Tier that's ten quarterbacks. Tier three is Jaden Daniels, just him, and then tier four is honestly just pocket passers for the most part with question marks, with question marks, but also some upside. So Joe Burrow, where if he's healthy, he's awesome, but wrist injury. Justin Herbert, who is like a top four real life quarterback, but is playing for maybe the most run heavy offense in the entire NFL. Trevor Lawrence, who I actually think is really good, even though people keep memeing him like having Daniel Jones's stats, which as a Giants fan, I think it's hilarious when people question it. I'm like, I would trade. I would do, like, horrible things. Unspeakable things. I would do, like, crimes. Like, crimes. I, I would have to go in front of, like, The Hague for the shit I would do to get Trevor wow. Lawrence for Daniel Okay. Jones. Okay. Uh, so he's there. Caleb Williams, who I feel like is, like, the most fun of all these guys. I think Caleb yeah. Williams would be a fun ride. Jared Goff. But Detroit just has another season of just, like, all their games are indoors. If you look at their schedule, like, Jared 14 Goff. 14 of 17. It is lining up really 14 well of Goff, 17 yeah. are in a dome. I, I looked at the Lions and I was like, oh, well, like, you know, their defense was bad. It might be better this year. And like, oh, maybe it won't be. Dude, they really, they just have, they're the Mario Kart rainbow strip again. And also, we, Craig, you were gone for that episode, but Deacon and I cracked the case that he can't throw on the road because we think he can't poop away from his house. Yeah. I, I mean, mean that's it's a real thing. Happens Look to all of us. Read yeah. a book. Yeah, you know, well, not. Oh. Traveling binds you up. <laughs> it does. Your brain just knows from like your space. Anyway, so Goff, Cousins, and Tua. That's Hawk Tua. Three, six, seven. That's seven Why guys. Two Why did he just say that? <laughs> I don't know. I just, honestly, honestly, I didn't mean to. It was like, it was reflexive. It was subconscious. You got to walk to a pole and <laughs> vote on that, that thing. thing. Uh, we've been saying that for the last two walk days. Walk to a pole and <laughs> vote on that Is thing. Is it the Hillary, Hillary Clinton memes? Yeah, I love all Hillary memes. Uh, okay. I, any thoughts? I think this tier, I think basically what I want to do is I want to, if I don't get one of those top guys, top five guys. I don't think I wanna, Herbert's in this tier. You think you'd move him back? You think, down? You, you think we're too Herbert high on Herbert? Like, he's not with Joe Burrow. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> you don't think he's even in the same tier as Herbert? We can move Herbert down. You want to move Kirk Cousins? We can move him lower down the tier. I don't know. If somebody was like, I'm going to take Justin Herbert over Joe Burrow, would you be like, yeah, I support that? I don't know. You tell me. You guys are the one that You're, hate Joe Burrow. I'm the one. Well, you guys are the ones who keep talking about the Chargers passing offense. Look, I, I do think that, like, the, the, Chargers wide receivers are pretty undervalued right now. But I'm like, I don't know. Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, Caleb Williams to me seem like, and even maybe Goff, feel like in a higher tier. Maybe even Tua. I don't know. I'm like, Tua led the league in passing last year. He could he could throw for 40 touchdowns this year. Goff is like in one of the best offenses in the league. Caleb is a dual threat. You know, Trevor Lawrence had like the most unlucky season ever last year and is another kind of a dual threat guy. And then Burrow's Burrow. I don't think Herbert has any shot of leading the league in any passing category. I'm I, I'm totally fine with that. I don't want Herbert. I, I I agree. And to be clear, I agree with you what you're saying about the Chargers receivers. I just think it's Lad McConkey, not Josh Palmer. But I, like I agree Lad, with you that Herbert. That's fine. I, I don't think too. you're right. There's no there's no path for if the like. I think there's a 
point of being like, how many ifs do you need? And it's like, if the Chargers actually get what they want out of the season, Herbert will be a below average total volume player. Occam's razor. So yeah, I, I'm fine to move Herbert out of this. That's fine. How do you feel so, about that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so then this tier is, and again, it's basically back and forth. <laughs> More like I'm just like tired of arguing with you guys. Well, that's what the, that the is the child. of this show. <laughs> no. Middle fucking child. Craig I'm and I quiet, have older I'm brothers. quitting on this podcast. The, Craig Are you I, a middle child? Yeah. Fuck. That's why we have older brothers. We are yeah. born in it. Yeah. He's just like five, I, whatever. I was born in the dark, <laughs> born in the darkness. You have no idea what it was like. Dude, our brothers would have so much. I, I think our brothers have a lot in common. My brother was visiting like a couple weeks ago. And he had to go. We had he came over for lunch to my apartment, and he was like, "Should I just?" Because I was like, "Oh, I have to go. I have a recording." And he's like, "Should I just like hop on the Zoom and see how long it takes for them to realize it's not you?" <laughs> like, do you think he, he could have gone twenty seconds without speaking, and you would kind of wouldn't have known it, it's him versus me? Because we look very similar. I think I would have noticed immediately. We look I mean, pretty we, similar. I've met we would have noticed looks, I don't know over Zoom. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. I thought it was I mean, Zoom is still like your face. Like it's pixelated, not as clear. I thought it, I thought it was going to be a good prank, but I guess. <laughs> You should have tried. Okay, so then I, I, strategy-wise, I would pair one of these guys with Jaden Daniels for, like, upside. We're two of them together. I, I, I don't feel good about having just Goff, but I would so, do Goff. So we're doing tier four. So tier three is Jaden Daniels on his own. Tier four, Burrow, Lawrence, Caleb, Jared Goff, Kirk, Tua. Yeah, Kirk, Tua. <laughs> Give him the old Kirk, Tua. <laughs> Kirk, Tua. <laughs> and vote on that thing. Throw on that thing. Um, uh, tier six, these are guys that honestly, like, it's just really star studded waivers. Wait, hold on. I kind of feel like we could even have a bigger tier than this. I don't know. You think like Rogers? Like Rogers, Stafford. Stafford. Yeah, they're all guys that just can be on your bench and like maybe they'll be yeah. good. So the next the next group we have here is Justin Herbert, Matt Stafford, <clears throat> Aaron Rodgers, Geno Smith, Baker, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Will Levis. I feel like, I mean, Rogers speaks for himself. Like, you know, he does speak for himself. I, I think that these guys are all like high upside backups or pick them up if they do well. Like Deshaun Watson, I mean, yeah. I can't say I want to spend my Sundays like being like, go Deshaun Watson. But like in terms of his performance, I actually do think, I feel like he'll probably actually be better this year. I think he... We Hard forget. not to be. He, yeah, he was bar. like the worst quarterback, yeah. but he did have his shoulder kind of destroyed. Yeah. And I look at Deshaun Watson, I'm like, all right, he'll probably be better. Will Levis. I know, I, everyone was worried about Anthony Richardson's shoulder injury, but... Uh, Deshaun Watson's was actually like worse. Well, he was feuding with the Kevin Stefanski, the Browns head coach. They were like publicly disagreeing. Right, about they the were diagnosis. not on the same page. No, about. which is very uh, nothing about that has been nothing about Deshaun Watson has been normal for half a decade at this point. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think anybody in this tier has has a ceiling. Like when everything goes right, you know, like any of these guys could be top ten quarterbacks. Herbert, if the defense collapses and they're playing from behind a bunch. Has to throw, and he he's really efficient. Throws a bunch of touchdowns. I mean, like last year, Russell Wilson. I know type, type of season. Um, Stafford is like, look, Stafford. if Puka Cup and Stafford play seventeen games, Stafford right. is probably going to be like, fringe. yeah, but they did that last year. I mean, Cup did it, I know, but yeah. Stafford played. Stafford actually is a lot like Herbert, uh, sub MVP level playing last year. Like Stafford, I actually think was like fourth in MVP, like should have been the fourth most valuable player, right there with like Lamar and Mahomes and Dak. But he averaged like 15 points a game. You know what I mean? Right. But so like, and that's because Kyron stole all his touchdowns. You know touchdowns. what this tier is? Yeah. This tier to me is the argument for doing super flex in fantasy where like the Mahomes becomes the first pick or Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen's the first pick. Because I, I look at this group and like if you do a 10 team league, one quarterback, all these guys will be on waivers. Justin Herbert, Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, Geno Smith, Baker, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Will Levis. Well, they won't be all on waivers. They'll just be on your bench. No, dude. Some might are, be on waivers. These are... Uh, this is like twenty four quarterbacks in a ten team league. I mean, oh. They're all beyond like like I half say everybody. Not everybody has two quarterbacks. Half these guys have been waivers. It's pretty common to have a backup on your team. No, I don't but, know. If there's a bunch of guys. On, if there's a bunch of guys on waivers that you could just pick up, some people just prefer not to have a court backup quarterback. Like I, Trevor if, Lawrence is not like on the waiver wire. Not Lawrence, but if that's the point though, because if we go to two, that's like what is that? Eighteen, nineteen quarterbacks for us. If you're in a ten team league, if Herbert, Stafford, Rogers, Geno, Baker, Russ, Deshaun Watson, Levis are on waivers. Why do you need to add? And like, yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, to who, some degree, it's matchups. Who do you who do you like the most in terms of like who are you kind of excited about if you take this guy for your backup quarterback in a one quarterback league, or if you're playing in Superflex, of, like of really excited, names? like potentially has the most fun potential or upside potential. Um, because I feel like some of these guys are floor plays. Stafford's a floor floor play. 
Gino's a floor play. Mayfield is a floor play. I don't, it's probably Deshaun Watson or Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I was about, not Levis. Statistically, it's Deshaun Watson. <laughs> I think that it's the easiest case to make for him. Like statistically, I find it like right. somewhat emotionally constipating to have him on my fantasy football team. Like I just, it's just like I kinda just like, don't want him on my team. But yeah. like, kind of like Rodgers too. Yeah, yeah. Rodgers could throw for forty-five touchdowns and it'd be like, yeah. And yeah, he's full of moral clarity too. So yeah, but, uh, he's got it all figured out. <laughs> you should look into it. You should look into that. What about Daniel Jones? I would rather scratch my no. <laughs> well, let's you want the rushing Pat quarterback doesn't. coming off the ACL injury and the neck the neck issue. That's fine. With no yeah. offensive line? Yeah, with no offensive line. Yeah, no, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. I, I do think Will Levis in your super flex league. I think Will Levis is a really good third quarterback. I like to, build, he's gonna be I, I like to imagine a world when Will Levis is a top 10 fantasy quarterback. I don't think he's going to be a top 10 real-life quarterback, but it just seems fun. Levis is the, Levis is the opposite of a four-play. He's like random spike week guy. Right. All right, so that's our, that's our tier... Uh, five and then tier six is just yeah it's, it's the Derek Carr's the Daniel Jones guys that we actively would do tier seven to get, to get yeah uh, whatever man I can't count um yeah it's like LeBron with the not one not two not three Justin Justin Fields is increasingly becoming more of a realistic last round pick right oh yeah Justin Justin Fields I would take over all these guys because if he played week one Justin Fields is yeah so much if, if Russ tears his ACL tomorrow. What tier is Justin Fields in? Dude, I would put Fields in that. He's, I would he's in the I would, fringe tier two. He's like in the Jaden Daniels, Daniels tier. I would, I would, yeah. I would take, I would put him. If well, if you're saying Russ is out for this season, yes, fringe tier two. I, I would take Fields above, like Stroud. Honestly, yeah, dude. Justin Fields, even when the Bears sucked, he Justin ran Fields for a thousand five, yards. Ran for a thousand fucking yeah. yards. That's only been done three times. By a quarterback like Michael Vick, Lamar Jackson, and Justin Fields. Like I would take him. I just yeah. And that, there's so, some. There's that's some... actually the answer. Justin Fields should actually be. Do you know why he's also perfect? Because if Russell Wilson starts Week One and they win, you can cut Justin Fields. Right, he's not going to play. Right. But if Russell Wilson like plays terribly and gets hurt in Week One and Fields is starting, like I think Fields is a top ten guy like every week in our rankings. There's that's also a call. there's just a little weirdness right now with I think there's some ambiguity where they're going to kind of let the let this thing play out a little if Justin Fields takes the job. He'll take he, the job. He's the most important waiver been, guy to monitor of the year. It's not even close. Right. This is also one of the more interesting camp battles we've had in a long time. Like, Russell Wilson is, like, a Hall of Famer, Super Bowl winning quarterback, like, all about leadership. And, like, right. him coming to a new team after this bizarre experience in, in Denver, even in this weird contract situation where it's, like, everybody knows that, like, the Broncos are paying him all this money and the Steelers aren't paying him anything. And then Fields coming in as this, like, weird first top 10 pick who, like— it's like the jury's out on like whether or not he should even like be a starting quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> right. And like the, the fact that like those two are battling, like I feel like both quarterbacks could like, I feel like Justin Fields is like, I'm obviously way better than Russell Wilson. And Russell Wilson is like, I'm obviously way better than Justin Fields. You um, know? Mike Tomlin was asked about those two, exactly the dynamic you said. And Arthur Smith, who was fired as head coach. And Mike Tomlin just says like, I like it because all three of these guys, frankly, have a lot to prove. Yeah, totally. And, uh, I don't know. I just think it's like such a weird dynamic between the two of them. I know that Russ is all like fake, like happy to have him here, happy to co love competing. <laughs> yeah, Russ, but it's, it's not Trevor Simeon versus Brock Osweiler, like a quarterback. It's very straight. It's a very high profile battle. What if they just play them both? Just a platoon. I think in 30 years, if football in America and the world still exists, that like two quarterback systems will actually be the, the, the new offense. But we don't it's have to hard enough to find one, though. Yeah. True. Also, <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure the sled thing, he was not pushing one of those like defensive sleds, he was pushing like a like a weighted sled for like a workout. Oh, is that right? Well, like a reindeer? You know those like, you know those just like, like those like metal sliding sleds that you like put like stacks of, like you put like a uh, plate right, on right, and you right. push? He was doing that. He was like in the weight room. He wasn't on the field. Well, I think he was maybe doing it on the field, but, but it, was, it, was, like a, it was a workout. It was it the first like day of the conditioning like, test. Like, <laughs> they, they have a new He's going over it. Yeah. It was a new test. I feel bad. Oh, poor people. What's the, uh, what is the, what is that sled called? The like defensive sled, that, like the offensive lineman thing. What is that called? That, that big sled? A sled. Blocking sled. Called a blocking sled? Is there a name for that? Probably. I don't know. Okay. I think it's just sleds. Just sled. Anyway, sled's a funny word. Sled. Yeah, I already lost all meaning. <laughs> sled. Okay. You know, emails? Emails. This one's from William. Will. Hey. Oh, it's Will I Am, actually. Can you imagine if you listen to the show? No. I awesome. just need to, uh, William says, I need to, I need you all to settle a dumb argument between my friends. 
Is pasta salad pasta? <laughs> no. Yes. I say no. Is uh, pasta salad I, pasta? It's like, uh, is macaroni and cheese pasta? Yes. Yes. No, it's not. What do you mean? It's not. I mean, it's Literally. made out of the same like material. But how, tell me how it's different you're, from cacio e pepe. Would you, would you ever how say, is it different from cacio e pepe? It's a completely different. It's like a completely different food. How we picture it, how we and how we reference it. It's pasta covered in cheese. cheese. It's pasta. I think if you're talking like scientifically, yes, it's pasta. I mean, sci it's literally it's just literally pasta covered pasta. in cheese. Right. Why is he asking the fucking question? Because it's no one thinks of pasta salad as pasta. If you say I'm gonna go have some pasta for dinner, no one's having pasta salad. I, I agree that it's not what you necessarily picture of. Why is the question being asked then? Of course it's pasta. I, if it's I, made I, literally out of pasta. So then what are we arguing about? The, the act, How people actually use it and reference it. It's like fruit salad is like tomatoes are fruit, but it's not a it's fruit not a salad. salad. But, but fruit salad is fruit. You could argue that pasta salad falls under anti-pasto. Get the an, anti-pasta is pasta? I'm just saying. It is Before some, pastas, the, it's the pasta. <laughs> But if you Google anti-pasto, like pasta salad will pop up. Like it, it is, it, that is more likely to be featured as an appetizer on an Italian menu than a main course. But if you put pasta, if you take a pot of pasta and you like- The pot, it, pasta word is losing all meaning. Pasta. Yeah, but you put in like mayonnaise <laughs> on it. You're like, well, that's Ugh. not pasta anymore. I think, yes. ridiculous. I think it's still pasta. No, no, no. It's if you, if you Okay, so you're having a dinner party. He's like, I'll invite- some friends over you're saying, yeah, we're going to have some pasta for dinner. Mm -hmm. And then you make them pasta macaroni salad. and cheese. They're going to think you're fucking insane. That is, but mac and cheese is pasta. It is. It's but a, they're going to think you're fucking insane. They're going to think you're a lunatic. If you say we're having pasta for dinner and then you make them macaroni and cheese. Yeah, I think just I, in, I, in, in terms of like how people it's like, am I being perceive pranked? the word pasta, they don't think of mac right. and cheese because it That's has its point. own specific name. Yes. But it is still pasta. That's just like yeah. the way that we... Just, you know, that's just like the, the way we perceive these dishes. Yeah, I, I agree. I think right. that you Which can be Which is what I'm arguing. But it is pasta. It's fucking pasta. Like, how do I even have this I, conversation? Look, I understand scientifically it's the same thing. What do you mean scientifically? What, yeah, why what even the ask the fucking question? What science? I didn't ask the question. He asked the question. Will, you asked, Will. You You're literally Will. did ask me the question. William asked the question. I read the question. <laughs> yeah, why'd you read the question then? Because, because, because I, want, I just thought it was easy to figure out. I didn't anticipate. Yeah, it is easy to figure out. It's not pasta. <laughs> spiritually, it's not possible. I feel like I'm taking crazy. Spells. Okay, spiritually. Yeah. So, what is it? Spirit. All right, if you want to say spirit, spiritually, I, it's a side. I get that's, that's a spiritually. Side. Spiritually is like a vague. I mean, we could do anything. Under We're in Los Angeles. Like it's a, you know, it's a spiritual town. Yeah, I'm not religious. I'm just spiritual. Is cereal bread? <laughs> Are pretzels bread? Right. I feel like you guys are cereal bread. Like. To me, it's very clear they're different things. Like, the way that they're used and the way they're referenced and the way that we communicate what we're eating to each other. Like, it's like, is a burrito the same as whatever other Mexican food that has the exact same ingredients? It's, like, I, presented I, differently. I know what you're saying. Is that a burrito? I know what you're saying because it's like, oh, it's a hot dog and sandwich. And it's like, it's because it's kind of like a trick of the light. I think the problem is right. pasta, like, sandwich isn't in the name hot dog. Pasta salad. The only two ingredients are like pasta and like mayonnaise. And like vegetables. And yeah, I know, but like those, like if there's pasta and mayonnaise, by definition, it's pasta salad. If like, you, I how is it not pasta? If you microwave it, it's definitely pasta. <laughs> Can you microwave mayonnaise? You can't do that, right? What? Can you microwave mayonnaise? Doesn't it get hot and like it undoes? seems like that would be disgusting. Yeah. But you're not supposed there's a reason you're not supposed to microwave mayonnaise, right? I've never it heard that. I don't know, but it sounds disgusting. But in theory, like yeah. there's nothing you have with mayonnaise that you like heat up. Other than like a yeah, grilled cheese. I guess, but yeah, I guess that's true. But you put mayonnaise on hot things. Like you put mayonnaise on a burger. Like what? And I guess my question is like, if you have pasta salad, why wouldn't you microwave? You would never microwave pasta salad, but like, why not? It's no, I was just joking right? more so that like pasta salad is typically served cold. But if it was hot, I would feel like it's more pasta, more like regular pasta. I think, is Are it, you, have you is ever eaten pasta salad as a main? No, it's a side. Yeah. Is it is it the temperature you think? Like if pasta salad was hot, it would be pasta. Like is it the problem? That's what I'm saying. Cold? If you microwave pasta yeah. salad, it feels more like true pasta. Yeah, it's like some weird ass pasta that Italian people would be outraged that you're eating. But right, uh, pasta salad would be an appetizer. That that doesn't mean it's not pasta. It's just weird <laughs> to have pasta as an appetizer. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously scientifically pasta. In yes. use, it's not pasta. I, 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 I get still, what you're saying. I do too, but I even have qualms with that statement. 
Why? I don't know. Because it, it, <laughs> it, it is pasta. We've just Americanized the fuck out of it and right. called it something else, but it, it is pasta. Mac- <laughs> Here's the thing. I get what you're saying about the spiritually. It's but I, think about I just way. think like why, it is why literally, even ask the question? It's American cacio e pepe. I mean, it's you know like macaroni I'm, and cheese. I'm picturing your son, Calvin, who's five years old, like taking a fork and thing of, po- thing of pasta salad and taking a bite and turns and says, hey, dad, is this pasta? And you're like, no. <laughs> yeah, you would you say, say no? Yes. <laughs> yes. How would you say explain this to Calvin, pasta. your literal five year old son? This I would is, say is, that's pasta salad. So you it's mac and cheese is pasta salad? Oh, but, sorry, you said mac and cheese? Yeah. No, so, no, I'm saying pasta. I, I thought one, you were actually. talking about mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, even better, sure. Yeah, I would absolutely not say mac and cheese is pasta. No. So he's like, so this is, so this is not pasta. Correct. So what is macaroni it? and cheese is not pasta. It's macaroni and cheese. Okay, wait. There's a very, very big difference. Okay, but what if okay, it's not wait. even macaroni? What if it's just like a different Let, shape? This is what I'm saying. Let's go deeper. What is okay. mac and cheese to you? Yeah. Uh, noodles with cheese. What's cacio e pepe? I don't know. I haven't made it before. What is it? Cacio e pepe is literally just like, like parmesan, parmesan? Cheese, pepper, and noodles. Right. Famous Italian pasta dish. Right, but what do you think of when you think of macaroni and cheese? What do you mean? It's a specific noodles thing. and cheese. But I'm saying like I think of like the the if I make you a dish with whatever type of noodle, farfalle, and I cover it in <laughs> melted gouda and cheddar and munster, mm-hmm. and I bake it. Right. Is that mac and cheese or is that pasta? Mac and cheese. Why? Because that's what I've always called it, and that's what it's. But I'm not call using it. macaroni, and I'm not using craft cheese or whatever you think is typically on mac. Like it's just I'm just putting what cheese you- on pasta. Is that mac and cheese now? Uh, it depends on if it's like a common thing that people use and call mac and cheese. See, I, it's, I think. What it's, if what if you just have pasta and you just kind of throw some like butter on it and some salt and pepper? Is that just butter noodles? Yes. What if you come over and take the put parmesan parm and just it. put like a fuck ton of parmesan on Which it? Which is like and what you I mix do. it up and there's so much cheese. Now it's like actually more cheese than butter originally. What is that now? It depends on how much cheese we're talking. A lot. That's if not you, pasta if you, anymore. If you sprinkle some cheese on buttered noodles, that's not macaroni. So, but here's and my thing: if you, so what you I'm guys, saying is, words are you guys are like arguing that words have no meaning. You're the one. No, we're arguing words have meaning. Pasta is no, no, pasta. You're not. I'm saying any pasta with cheese on it is pasta. Yeah. No, it is. no, because because th- it's like subgroups. Everything has a specific name for it. What are you talking about? Macaroni though? and cheese is a, a specific thing. But uh, so, uh, agreed, but it's a subgroup underneath the umbrella of pasta because right. by definition, it's pasta. Right. But also, uh, what are the other groups? Of noodles and sauce? And t- yeah. I mean, there's like a million. I don't know. But there's like, a million specific dishes that you would call a specific name. Oh, yeah, like you, 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 you want to just and, call everything pasta. Would you no, say no, mac but, and cheese is a type of pasta? Like you call, That's like, all. If you're saying like, oh, spaghetti is spaghetti. I, yeah. I feel, you, guys are argue, you, guys, you guys are arguing like t- I understand <laughs> that it's literally pasta. I'm saying nobody fucking says that. So it's irrelevant. Okay, we're gonna do a poll. Yes. Is what mac you, and cheese? What are you fucking talking about? Of course it's pasta. I understand scientifically <laughs> okay, it's wait. the same substance. No, but I want to make sure we, we accurately word this poll. I think the poll should say. If somebody said mm, no, I think you know what you know what I think the actual difference is, and I don't know why, but this. Sums like, I it can't up. believe you're on Heifetz's side on this. No, no, I think <laughs> I, know, I, think, I feel like it's you should do it. <laughs> That's a red flag for you. But the no, it's it's a red flag for him. <laughs> here's <laughs> here's I think wh- fighting between my two parents. I can't explain why, but this is, this sums it up. I hear what you're saying when I'm. Like, I hear what you're saying. I'm going to make pasta. It. And I make mac and cheese. And you're like, oh, that's not what I was envisioning. That's I like get a that. misdirection. You're, but I you're... also think if I take a bite of mac and cheese and I'm like, oh, this is pasta. And you're like, no, it's not. That's also kind of whack. Okay. Right? <laughs> like you said, no, this is not pasta. I'm like, oh, weird thing to say. I think in the spirit of the question, it makes no sense to say, yes, it's pasta. I think the poll Why should say. Why are you say, fucking asking if it's pasta? The poll should say, do you think. <laughs> because it's not. I, That's why he's asking. Well, it never occurred to me to ask until I saw this. Is question. pasta salad pasta? Of course it's not. Oh. That's you, why he asked the question. All right, so that's the poll. Is Does pasta this guy salad, actually think pasta salad it. is salad or pasta? I mean, it's not salad. That's the other thing. It's, it's, it's not pasta salad or pasta. It's not salad. <laughs> no, I think that's. It's neither. I think that's the poll. Is pasta salad pasta? I know. And I think yes or no. And I'm like, yes, it is pasta. I think you're a lunatic if you think pasta salad is pasta. I think you're a lunatic if you think it's salad. I think it's pasta. Fine. I, I actually just had pasta salad last weekend, and it was a giant bowl of tortellini, <laughs> cold, mixed with— And you with, ate it for a whole meal. No, I had it on the side. 
It was on Fourth of July. I had it on the side of a hot dog. Which I don't know what the fuck a hot dog is. You know what's is. ironic is we did a pretty good job like, pacing this yeah. episode. And I don't now actually. It's think like, I don't know how long it's gonna be. I want to make the poll about mac and cheese. I think the poll should what? be like, do you when you think of mac and cheese, do you think of pasta? But we had it before. It's like is it's either is pasta salad pasta or is mac and cheese pasta? And I think it's just like yes or no because he's like emphatically no, of course not. No, I don't want to. That's say, the simplest version. I don't want to say is mac and cheese pasta because DK is admitting that it is pasta. But pasta salad, he just said it's not pasta. Is, it, is so a taco like, salad a taco? No, a taco, a taco requires a tortilla. Yeah, tacos are. There's shape. tortillas in it. Little strips. It needs to be. I in think a the, full the, tortilla. The definitional taco difference. Needs to be in oh, a, so you think a taco has to have a very specific set of parameters? I see. Okay. This isn't coming out how you think it's coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I have absolutely no doubt that I'm right about this. I don't even. So, a taco is a shape of a thing. It's a specific set of ways that you make it that everyone knows what it means. That's to me what pasta is. It is meat is. sauce and toppings inside of a taco. I think here's my here's my actual question for you. If I have macaroni pasta, and cheese is how a much, specific thing that people how can much picture. cheese do I need to That's grate fair. on Parmesan? You're saying that there's a spectrum where eventually, if I added enough cheese, it would cease to be a pasta dish in a way. Like if I do it like two Wait, seconds of like if I have just buttered noodles and I just scrape some Parmesan. He's saying like if there's only a little bit of cheese, it's pasta. But then if there's a lot of cheese, it's mac and cheese. But and theory, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. If I kept going, it would eventually become like a mac. And it cheese becomes thing. what is everyone acknowledges is mac as and mac cheese. and cheese. <sighs> but I, I, we have to get to the, the <laughs> core of the question, which is which is what is mac and cheese pasta? I think the core is the simplest one. Is the poll is is pasta salad pasta? Yes or no, or is mac and cheese pasta? Yes or no, like that's the that's where he like that's the core disagreement. Because right now, still, if I ask you, is mac and cheese pasta? Are you still saying no? Yeah. Okay, then we should make that's the poll. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't think. Do you think mac and cheese is pasta? Yes. God. That's yeah, it's just a type of pasta. Weird. I don't, it's a type it's, of pasta. Yeah, it, it's just Americanized noodles with cheese on it. It's just an Americanized dish. <laughs> I just think you you would think someone was insane if they said we're having pasta for dinner and it was mac and cheese. I agree because that's N like that, words that's, matter. Yeah, but that'd be like if I was like <laughs> we're having spaghetti for dinner and then I serve them lasagna. They'd be like, this is just different than what you said, but they're still both pastas. It's just not the pasta. You think that would be a, you think that would be a normal thing if someone said we're having lasagna and you got or well, spaghetti no, and they got no, lasagna? No, I'm saying no, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying like if I was like, hey everybody, I'm serving spaghetti for dinner tonight, come on over. And then I served them cacio e pepe, they'd be like, and I, or I don't know if I was like, <laughs> I, 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 I think what, what you're saying is mac and cheese is so popular. It has its own name. So that like, you usually don't refer to it, but it's like, I agree that like, oh, you're having pasta for dinner. Oh, I wasn't envisioning mac and cheese, but it's not the kind of pasta I envisioned, yeah. but it is pasta. No, I understand that. I mean, I, I understand what you're <laughs> saying that pasta is, pasta salad is literally made out of the same substance as pasta. So why is it not pasta? Because the name matters. Pasta is something that people specifically the know what that is. The name is pasta. Macaroni is pasta. I know. So that's taco how, salad how are we the ones that is a taco. Matter? No, because taco salad. No, a, a taco, taco salad is, is a thing is that is taco a shape. ingredients and when in you, a salad. When you take the shell and break it and put it over the ingredients. It's a specific way that you make it. No, no. Yeah, when the shells, no. When the taco shell <laughs> You know is a taco salad is not a taco. You know your pasta salad is not a main. It's you're, not you're a salad. It's not a pasta. No, it's ridiculous. Like if the, if I'm the, saying that the, the words that you use to describe something matter. And, and so when someone says, I'm having, we're having pasta for dinner. No one thinks, oh, it's going to be a pasta salad. Be that as it may, it's still pasta. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. It literally, yes. Fucking it it yes. literally is pasta. I'm aware of that. You know in a really weird way, I arguing. don't even know if we disagree. You guys, you guys, I think are, DK you, guys would are, just... you guys are like arguing with me like I can't comprehend that it's made out of pasta, which I understand. I'm arguing something completely different. It feels like we're arguing completely I think DK, I don't even think we disagree. I think DK's saying he would be betrayed if he had pasta salad. If we I'm just saying people pasta. would think you're insane if you said we're having pasta for dinner. And Kai, how long serve... have we been talking about mac and cheese? <laughs> <laughs> is it time, is it? <laughs> okay, all right. All right. I was like, if we're at 20, we need to fucking yeah, end this. Just, just, all just I'm go. saying is... The, have I done the goodbye the thing The person yet? who no. asked this question knew what they were doing. All right, anyway. All right, we got to... Thank you, DK. So we got think, nowhere. We are going to make a poll. Yeah, we'll make figure it poll, out. Vote. Vote. If you're on Spotify, yeah, please vote. Even if you're on another platform, please go to Spotify and vote in the poll. We need to know about this. Uh, thank you, DK. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Kai. Thank you, Jack. For Oh, my God. Thank you, everyone who listened to slogging through that. Oh, my God. Please vote in the poll. I don't know. If Email I... Yeah, Jack is football. here in person. He had to witness that. Jack grew a beard in the time that we've been here. Um, <laughs> Jack, like, hates us. Jack, is mac and cheese pasta? Yeah. <laughs> Email us at ringerfantasyfootball at gmail.com if you have thoughts on Craig or I 
in, in the Olympics or just pasta salad and mac and cheese. Vote in the poll. Wait, should we? Thank fuck, you. how many polls can we do? I want to do handball versus shooting poll. Oh, we'll have to come back to that. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> Lauren. Uh, thank you, uh, T.I. Nice. Do you see where we're coming from, though? You yes, obviously. Don't disrespect T.I. like that. Dude. Yeah, fine, fair. We got to talk about T.I. a little bit. Which I love, dude. T.I., he was right there with Jay-Z and Eminem and Kanye for like a, like a couple of years. He had his moment. He had some hits. Yeah. yeah. Live Your Life. Banger. That was every Rihanna. Yeah. Yeah, such a good song. It's like the early aughts. Rubber, uh, yeah. Rubber Band Man. That whole era. Rubber Band Man. That song's great. Swagger Like Us. What does the... T.I. stand for? Does it initials? I don't know. Oh, wow, what does T.I. stand I've for? I've never looked that up. Let's get into it. T.I. Oh, he also had this song with Justin Timberlake. The, what is it? Not since you've been gone. Uh, 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 so long. Oh, I can't sing. What is it? Timberlake. Ugh, look it up. Also, Everyone's screaming right now. Oh, me, he's dead and, and gone. gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dead okay. and gone. There you go. His name is Cliff Harris. Oh, great job with the rebrand. I wonder why his name is T.I. <laughs> what does T.I. stand for? Yeah, Tip. It stems from his childhood nickname, Tip. There you go. Okay. Dead and Gone was good. Dead and gone, dead and gone. He had a he had a really good peak there for a while. Yeah. He was like oh, remember whatever you like, you could have whatever, whatever you, you like. like. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Was it one of his songs in uh, the Hangover? Oh, bring him out. Oh, maybe not. No, I, I think you're thinking of Flo Rida. Yeah, oh, maybe Flo Rida. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the and also the Kanye song when they go to the city and say, uh, "What is it?" The. Um, oh, uh, can't tell me nothing. Yes. No, I don't think I was thinking that one. I, well, the flow right. No, you're yeah. thinking of uh, right, right round. round. Mm. You spin my head. <laughs> That's like pasta. Yeah. Should we ask T.I. if pasta salad is pasta? Yeah, he's the foremost authority on it. Shout out to William who just emailed us in the most chaotic segment we've ever had. Wait, he knew, why he he knew what he was doing. That? Because I don't he knew know. that. Because we're the authority of stupid someone shit. Someone would have an insane opinion on so it. So all he said. How are we insane? All he, so so William was just like I'm gonna ask these guys. He's gonna toss a fucking pasta grenade. Salad is pasta yeah, he's just, tossing a grenade and and letting us go at it. He just created a tsunami. I, I just can't I believe push back on one thing. If Jack, you came over for dinner and Jackie was making pasta <clears> and it was pasta salad, you'd be like, "Fuck you!" You'd be like, "This is insane! I can't believe she did for this." A main? I wouldn't say "fuck you" because no, I'm we're gonna a have normal human being. No, no, we're gonna have like, "Hey, we're gonna." She's gonna make like a like a chicken. On the like, way home with Skippy, you'd be like, "She said pasta." It was like pasta salad. It was gonna be pasta on the side, and then the pasta is pasta salad. You like. You'd go home after the if dinner. If she said, I'm going to have pasta on the side, <laughs> pasta on the side. I'd, I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. Pasta and salad. Pasta on the side. But no one and says, I'm going to have pasta on the side. No, but she's. But you were like, what's for dinner? And she's like, oh, yeah, I made a chicken and there's some pasta on the side. And then the pasta was pasta salad. You drive home with Skippy after and be like, that was crazy. She had pasta salad instead of the pasta, right? If you made chicken and then had pasta salad on the side, I think it'd be a little weird. But she said pasta and it was pasta salad. You'd be like, that was that was weird. Yeah. I don't think it's that weird. I, don't, I, I, I think, I think pasta and pasta salad mean completely different things. And I'm going to, I will die on that hill. They mean different things. I, Sorry, I, words matter. No, look, they do mean different things. I know, but, but the they words still are matter. pasta. They're just different types of pasta. I'm like with you until you take the words matter uppity horse high hill because then it's like, but pasta's in the word. They're just different kinds of pasta You're just trying dishes. to trick me if you say we're having pasta and then we have pasta salad. Uh, look, I agree. It's misleading. <laughs> fine, but then you need to come up with a new name for pasta salad because if it's not pasta, okay, we can't fine, call it I'll that. come up with a new name. I don't care. All right. We have a recording. It's like if yeah. I was like, hey, come over. I'm making potatoes and then I serve you <laughs> potato <laughs> salad. Like that, you're like, fuck you this. <laughs> 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 you know, that's fair, actually. Oh, my All right, God. So we agree. Yeah, but it, it's not one to one with potatoes because potatoes is not like a dish. <laughs> That's true. Pasta is a dish. Fuck, you can't say I'm, I'm making potatoes tonight. Baked potato? You'd have to specify. Right, exactly. But that's also a side. Pasta is a main. Also, you know what? We, you know what? We actually kind of like, we, we, we tore each other apart. But I think that we should reunite over who rebranded all the mayonnaise as salad, pasta, chicken salad, tuna salad. Who was the person who was like, we're going to call this salad? Well, do you guys, do you guys yeah. like pasta salad? I love it. Yeah, it's good. I like chicken salad. I like everything. <laughs> it's, honestly, I think all food is the best. <laughs> <laughs> you like all food. I like mac. You and Kai. I, I like oh, best of friends. Do, do we dare wade into macaroni salad? Oh my god! Are you aware of that? It's gonna tear us asunder. That is literally the combination of mac and cheese and pasta salad. Is, <laughs> is it macaroni mac salad? Wait. So, th is the question is macaroni salad pasta. macaroni? But if you. If <laughs> Is if it the, pasta? Is macaroni salad macaroni? If there's cheese in it, 
Is it mac and cheese? If there's cheese is in the mac- pasta salad? What is macaroni salad to you? Is that pasta? No. That's- Same thing. I, I mean, I'm sticking with it. It's something different. I feel like... I, I-, I think it just, it is pasta, but it's all, it's a different type of pasta Yeah, it's just dish. a different type of pasta. Pasta is a wide net. You're it's just have, something you don't right. get as much. And, I, and I've acknowledged like, that this you, whole time. Is lasagna pasta? No. It's a specific type of... Pasta. Right. But, uh, but not my, pasta. My, dude, uh, again, my whole point this whole time has not been that it's literally not pasta. It's just how we refer to something and how we should describe something. And, ha- and, and the specific words that we use to describe a, a food or dish matters. That's my whole point this whole time. It's never been, I literally don't think it's made out of pasta. I, no, I know, I know. <laughs> For the eighth time. Is cereal bread salad? <laughs> <laughs> It's bread soup. Yeah, I just said the weirdest bread laugh soup. of all time. Bread soup? <laughs> bread salad. I think it is. I think the macaroni salad question, that's going to haunt me. <laughs> is it macaroni? Is it pasta? Let's get the fuck out of here. Goodbye, <laughs> Goodbye everyone. <laughs> <laughs>